Hi, Charles Roman here. Well, my wife and I just got back from Summerfield, Florida, where we attended the third annual Runaway Camper Homecoming Rally. Before the rally, I contacted a friend of mine, Timmy Burris, and said, Hey, you know a lot about solar, and I know a fair amount about portable power. Let's put on a seminar, because people are always asking, How do you run this, and how do you run that? And so we put together a one-hour seminar, and you're about to see the first part where Timmy talks about what he installed in his camper. It's not so much a how-to, but it explains what he put in it and how it all works. And then there is a second part that I recorded later where Timmy is talking a little more in depth about solar in general and how it relates to camping. And so I hope you watch that second part as well. And then I have a part that I'm doing about portable plug-and-play systems. Thanks for watching. Right. My name's Timmy Burris. My background is in electronics and math. Uh, we chose uh, with our runaway range runner to get what would fit us and how we intended on using the camper. Uh, we've got uh, 400 watts of solar up on our roof. So now Timmy's going to explain his system and you're looking at it right now. This is the heart of the system and go for it, Timmy. Okay. From the outside of the camper, from the solar panels, we run down the front of the camper. We come back through two small holes underneath. And then all of our wiring we've got running through a one and a quarter, one inch half, inch and a half hole here in the uh, bench top. So we run in through there. We bring our power in from our solar panel. That's the first two wires here. And it goes to the charge controller. The charge controller will take the voltage coming in from the solar panels and it'll drop it down to the voltage that we need for the batteries. And in the process, it will turn around and increase the amperage if there's above the voltage that's coming out. That's the two batteries here. In between that, we've got a fuse, and then we go to the batteries. E each part of this has fuses in between. Okay. You don't want to have a short and take out bigger portions than you have to. From there, we go to our two batteries. Each of these is a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, everything inside the camper is Renogy. The two panels uh, on the top are 200 watt. They are... I'll have to look on our brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our brand on the two panels are high tech solar. They were bought from eBay. Okay. Uh, from the batteries, we come back up here. We run to the 12 volts. We've got the the ground side here. I've got a ground bus bar, and then I've got the the hot bar here, which turns around and has fuses. From that, I come in. I've got one first fuse, which would be a main fuse, similar to what you've got in your house, which might be a 100 amp, and then you break out your other breakers. In this case, we've got a 15 amp main, and then everything else is separated. We've got 2 amp for lighting, etc. We come off, our biggest one on here, biggest load, is, is the uh, uh, Dometic CFX 28 refrigerator. It's got a 7.5 amp fuse on it. Okay, So that covers everything that we're able to run with 12 volt refrigerator, lights, charge phones, a fan, we've got a 12 volt TV. Uh, so all that's 12 volts, you're better off running 12 volt appliances than you are 110 appliances or AC because those are going to be your energy hogs. For that, you can see the difference. If we're trying to get AC, look at our wires coming for 12 volts. Now look at our wires here coming to be able mm -hmm. to take that 12 volt from the battery and bring it back up to, to AC got a thousand watt inverter with that inverter we're able to actually run a coffee pot that uh, takes 632 watts the air conditioner and we only run one of these at a time the air conditioner this uh, GE brand air conditioner pulls 385 watts with the compressor on if it's only the fan it's somewhere around 55 to 60 watts uh, other things that we've run that are AC we've run a 350 watt heater uh, or we've run our electric blanket with it. The big question is how long can you run that AC? Good question. Uh, the air conditioning based on the battery that, and, and volume that we've got, we've got 2,560 watt hours of storage here. We've run the air conditioning for nine hours along with everything else and we've still only pulled the battery down somewhere between 60 and 70 percent. Okay. Okay. Solar panels at 400 watts on a good sunny day, we were able to put in 2,000, and typically we will use less than 1,500. Okay. okay. But people want to know, if I'm in the middle of Arizona, can I just run this AC 24 hours a day nonstop because there's sun and I've got, I've got panels? That will not happen with a system this size. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, 
the uh, runaway camper is something that we're going to sleep in. It's a sleeping box or just a place to be able to camp overnight. Uh, and so we're looking at somewhere around eight or nine hours that we're going to be in the camper. Uh, maybe ten at the most. There's, there's plenty of power for that. Uh, this gives us the ability, and for us it works, like I say. If we're going to a point that's going to take two days to get there, we can stop in the middle at a Walmart, a Cracker Barrel, wherever. Typical for us is a Walmart, and we'll find a nice Walmart Supercenter. We'll go in and we'll restock our refrigerator. Mm -hmm. We'll come back out, we'll settle in, we'll watch a movie uh, for an, a couple hours. And uh, we've got the air conditioning going, and, and we'll, we'll shut down for the night. The next morning we get up and we pack up and go. Do you, do you carry a gas generator as a backup? No, we do not. Okay. Uh, and the other thing with this system is, in fact, the only way we can charge is solar. I don't have a DC to DC uh, converter to be able or, or inverter, converter, whichever it is no. in that case, that will allow us to be able to charge from the car while it's driving. Right. Something I've looked at, I have not made the choice to do that mm -hmm. yet. Okay. Because typically we will wind up camping one night in between. Uh, or we'll do two, and and if you're camped in places with good weather, like we've had luckily this time mm -hmm. in Ocala yeah. uh, area, uh, we've used the air conditioner none. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, so the weather is what determines. It, yeah, so you could, you could have that full. You ran it nine hours last night, and you got three rainy days. Right, and so, that that would be a problem. Yeah, that would be a problem. <clears throat> For the most part, if we're going someplace, we're going to be doing that one night of boondock in between here and getting to the next point. Yeah. Then we've got campground where we've got shore power. There we go. And then the next jump might be two days down the road. Okay, we've got one night in between that we boondock. So you, you don't have unlimited time. You, you make your plans. Make our plans. Uh, figure out where we're going. Uh, and then, of course, if you get to places that are up north, uh, I'm talking about Yellowstone, Glacier, those types of places... Uh, a lot of those you don't have power in the national parks. A lot of them either limit, restrict, or no generator at all. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you know, this is a viable option. Uh, so is something such as a power unit as a Jackery or a Goal Zero mm -hmm. or something such as that. You've got to figure out what you're trying to run and then make it fit how you're going to use it. Right. Whether it be a, a smaller portable power unit or a full-blown So unit. you would say that what you've got here is sized for a runaway or a typical teardrop, wouldn't you say? It will fit a runaway. I cannot say that this system, power-wise, it would work for a teardrop. Okay. Mounting of the panels on a teardrop, I don't feel like it would work. Yeah. You know, just because of the fact that fan panels are flat and a yeah. teardrop does not, True. is not comparable to a flat roof. But as far as power usage, for small campers of any sort, this works, can work for them. Yes. If you've got a way of getting it all in. Right. And the big question is, people want to know, okay, we've quickly seen, and we're going to be talking more in a little bit about, about solar in general, um, what, what money have you got in this system that we are just now showing? Okay. Typical for any type of a power battery ba based system, if you're talking lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate you're looking at a dollar per watt hour with this one we've got two batteries total power is 2560 watt hours and we've got roughly 2600 in it would be a a full list price mm -hmm. some of the components we bought at a discount and if you watch any of these sites Renogy included you can catch sales for 10 15 20 i think i've seen a few components not mm -hmm. the batteries themselves but an inverter or a charge right. controller where they've dropped them down 25% okay. for a limited mm -hmm. amount of time. What tempted me, <laughs> and we had somebody come up on one of the sites, posted a que you know, question, can I run an air conditioner off of solar power and for my runaway? Yeah. And people were saying, no, it's impossible. No, you can't carry that many batteries. You, you don't have enough roof space. Mm -hmm. And me being a math major in Absolutely. electronics, the first thing I said, well, wait a second, let's do the math first, you know. And I started saying, okay, well, I know how much power my air conditioner is using. 
I ran the numbers and we were coming up around 1100 mm -hmm. watt hours in a day. And I said, well, that's not hard. That's one battery. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I want to run everything else, we'll just have two batteries and I can do that for, you know, the nine hours of air conditioning. And it's pure math. It's just math. Well, I think Timmy did a great job explaining how he installed solar in his Range Runner. And any of the products that he mentioned, I will list below, but I don't do Amazon links, so you can just do your own searching for those products. And I hope you watch the second part of Timmy's talk where he is a little more in depth. It's a little bit longer video, but it's well worth the time learning more about solar and how it relates to camping. And I also hope you watch my part of the seminar where I will talk about plug and play systems like Jackery and Line Energy lithium batteries. Thanks for watching.